and that'll be the first thing that people hear when we start this episode. <laughs> well, that was the first fucking thing that they see. It's goddamn Colonel Sanders. Who makes the best chicken? No. Yes. no. Objectively is... untrue. <laughs> yeah. Original recipe. Welcome, everyone. It's not even the original <laughs> recipe anymore. Jack Shut Turtles your is the only mouth. one that still uses Shut the original recipe. Shut your fucking mouth. My name is Matthew. Joining me today here on Jupiter's Croc, another episode, is uh, someone down there in, in Memphis who knows nothing about great chicken. Ronan. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? The, the, it's seven <laughs> herbs and spices. How, like, you hate spices. It so is more than seven. So how can you even seven. handle it is the more seven than herbs seven. and spices? It's like You just need, like, plain... You just need, like, plain chicken, no skin on it, no salt, no seasoning, look, white man. people chicken. That's look, what man. you want. <laughs> <laughs> and here, uh, we're going to try to keep him out of uh, a tearful morning period, is Steve. Yeah, everything Ronan just said is true. That's false. That's 100% <laughs> false. So, ladies and gentlemen... Um, this is the episode we've all been waiting for. This is the episode where uh, where Steve cries, and we're all very, very excited to. <laughs> I will to cry hear. a lot. Um, we we are here with what's this one called? Party favors. <laughs> Fantastic title for a very Jesus. sad, depressing episode. Um, I'll, I'll get into my thoughts on like when I first saw this episode uh, years ago, because I actually reflected back on it after I watched it. And uh, and we'll we'll get there. But uh, Steve also knows Plotticus. Why don't you take it away? Well, let's let's talk a little bit about party favors. Uh, well, it opens with Spartacus, who is doing a I don't I don't know what kind of special fight this is, but he is chained to to Vero, and they are going to go out and, and fight together uh, while chained uh, because reasons. And they beat everybody except this one giant grimace motherfucker. And they they end up <laughs> what deciding... What the fuck was he wearing? I don't know. Like, dirty cabbage. Uh, <laughs> he, like, they they decide that they, they're trying to fight him head on. They've beaten everybody else. This is the last guy left. They try to fight him, and they just none of their attacks are working. They get the bright idea to uh, basically wrap their chain around the guy's neck and uh, they basically, like, tug a war until this guy's head just explodes off of his body, uh, and it's great. People are yelling for Spartacus, but, uh, you know, Verico, Ver Verico, Pharaoh's <laughs> stock is, is also rising now. There's a moment before this, before they're about to go out and fight, where uh, Vero, is, he's not really... He, he, like, his mind's not in it, because he has tried to get in touch with his wife, and... Uh, continues to be ignored, and Spartacus like grabs him by the fucking face and says, "Look, I will not go out there unless your head is in the game." And, and Barrow confirms that his head is in the game, and uh, you know they, they go out and they win. Uh, while this is going on, uh, Bodyatus and crew, as well as uh, Calavius and this like annoying kid Numerius, uh, they're watching the fight. Numerius's uh, birthday is coming up. Uh, he's going to be a man because he's, you know, that ripe old age of 15 now. Uh, and Badiatis, you know, not one to miss an opportunity, says, hey, come celebrate his birthday at, at the Ludus because he loves gladiators. And uh, Clavius says, yeah, great idea. So it's that's, fantastic that's idea. the plan for the rest of that's the plan for the rest of the episode. Uh, Badiatis is going to uh, entertain Numerius and Clavius and once everyone is super happy with the day uh Badiatis is going to say to Clavius, hey uh i want to be a politician uh support me and Badiatis, you know the most confident man in the fucking world knows that Clavius is going to support Badiatis when he brings this up uh so everyone goes back to the ludus uh spartacus and vero get uh, a hero's welcome from everyone but crixus who looks like someone like pissed in his cereal this morning <laughs> and then aurelia shows up uh vero's wife uh shows up uh we asked a couple of episodes ago like spartacus tells mira go find vero's wife and we asked how does she do this does she just leave the ludus and uh, apparently yes she just left the ludus and this is something that she is allowed to do she just left to go find Vero's wife and did and wonder, so Aurelia like, is here well I wonder if that's because you know 
we, we see multiple times that Asher is allowed to just leave the Ludus to go to the market and do th various things. So I wonder if that's the same sort but of he, case with her. Yeah, but he's doing that on behalf of Badiatis. Like, yeah. Spartacus gave her this order. It, it's weird, but it's not something to, to, to I don't know, stress about. Uh, Aurelia is here, and Vero goes and makes up with her. He begs for forgiveness. He tells her that, you know, I, I want you and only you. Uh, if you'll take me back, I will raise this child uh, as my own. Uh, please, please, please take me back. And so they make up. Uh, and so Vero is very happy. It's also like he was only planning on being a gladiator for two years and uh, we established a couple episodes ago that a year has passed so like the the end is in sight vero is very close to the point where he is going to Ugh. regain his freedom he's already making plans for the future with aurelia uh, everything is coming up vero this episode i got a good <laughs> feeling about how things are going to turn out for him well what's weird he's two though... weeks away from retirement two weeks yeah. away what's weird is he lost all of his money though so all of the money he gambled it all away yeah, I, I don't... The Vero's, like, slave situation isn't super clear. I have questions about how all this works later on that we'll get into. Uh, but uh, Vero certainly seems to think that the end is in sight, and that is where Vero is at this point. Um, also, back at the Ludus, Xena goes to uh, Alithia, and uh, Alithia was supposed to be in the Pulvinus watching the game, so she wasn't there, and everybody noticed that she wasn't there, and Xena had to make up an excuse. Uh, but Xena goes and finds her and says, hey, you know, you gotta show up to these things because people notice when you're not around, and Alithia says, you know, people, like, anyone that sees me will immediately know that I murdered Lycania. Like, they'll just see it on my face that I did this <laughs> terrible thing. And Xena says, no! You and I, were good friends. I'll protect you, but since we're friends, I need a favor. Go invite these people to the party. Do it now. Do it. <laughs> and so it's very clear that uh, that, uh, that Alithia is Xena's slave at this point, right? I mean, how else should we take this? Yeah, I mean, she's uh, in Xena's debt, that's for sure. Yep. Uh, so we've, we've got, like, so things have been uh, flipped around from how things originally were between the two of them. Uh, anyways, it's the the day of the day of the party, uh, Numerius's birthday. He shows up. He's very happy. Badiatis tells him, "Hey, you're in charge of the Ludus today. You can do whatever you want." Uh, Numerius wants to have Spartacus and Crixus fight, uh, and it's just supposed to be an exhibition match. And there's a scene where uh, Badiatis tells both Spartacus and Crixus, "Hey, this is just an exhibition. This is just for entertainment." If either of you seriously injures the other, you will be punished. And uh, later on, like they eat, both Spartacus and Crixus get like kind of a, a scene to themselves. And Spartacus is talking to Badiatis, and Badiatis says, "Yeah, Crixus was hot shit for a while, but you know, just uh, you're the hot shit now. Just don't embarrass Crixus too bad." And Spartacus Blast is like, "Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll be good. You know, you got nothing to worry about." Crixus, on the other hand, goes to Navia and he's like. I'm gonna fucking kill Spartacus. And Do Navy it. is like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, if you, like, Badiatis <laughs> just told you that if you cause serious injury to Spartacus, you will be punished. And Crixus is like, no, 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 no. I know the crowd. The crowd will want blood. He yep. was right, but he's not gonna be the one spilling the blood. Um, well, the, like, one person in the crowd was told to spill blood. And, yeah, was told that through a very. Uh, very, uh, we'll get you know, there. We'll get there, Ronan. Don't me, spoil we're, anything. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty much about there now. Uh, Alithia uh, n uh, understands <laughs> that uh, basically Numerius gets whatever he wants because it's his special day. And yeah. so Fresh Alithia off 14 years old, goes, he just turned 15. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Alithia goes and uh, seduces this 15-year-old boy I to consent. put... I consent, Steve. Is it okay if I okay, consent? Well, he, <laughs> uh, well, he's 15. No, no, uh, I consent, Steve. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, Numerius is 15. God damn it, I uh, consent, Steve. <laughs> so, but Alithia seduces Numerius, and uh, so now, later on, uh, Numerius is going to do what Alithia wants. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about what she wants later on, because it... <laughs> Jesus, ah. Uh, I hate this episode. I hate this episode in the best way. Uh, the greatest five seconds of that kid's life. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, what else I have a question. I, like... I have a scenario that I want to bring up to both of you as well. Once, Jesus once Christ, this is going to be bad. Yeah, this is going to be <laughs> unairable, most likely. Uh, so, before we get to the finale, there's a couple of like other smaller plot points going on. Um, Duro is Duro keeps getting into fights, and he's protected by Agron. Uh, and Spartacus at one point tells Agron, like, look, you're not doing him any favors by protecting him. You can't always be out there with him in the arena. He's got to learn to fight or he is going to die. And so when Numeria shows up, uh, Duro picks a fight with Crixus, and Crixus is kicking his ass. <laughs> and Agron finally, like, lets him fight on his own. Like, Duro got himself into this fight. Duro's got to get himself out of it. Uh, Duro loses badly, but because he refused to quit, he has now, like, earned the... He gets a gladiator slow clap. He, he's earned the respect of the gladiators. <laughs> um, there's a scene where... Spart I don't even remember why Spartacus uh, got, got called up to speak to Body Otis, but he walks in, and Body Otis and Asher are playing a board game, and... Asher goes to make a move, and Spartacus, Spartacus says, "You dumb shit! That's the terror. That's a terrible move. Don't do that." And so Spartacus takes over the game because Spartacus knows how to play this game and is apparently really good at it. And Bodyatus just says to Asher, "Like, uh, yeah, get up and go bring us some wine." Just completely shits on him. Like, <laughs> It, it, it's it's probably like me the some lowest, cookies, bitch. The <laughs> lowest scene that Asher's been in. Like Asher, like you know, he's got a little a little confidence now. He is Bodyatus's right hand man, and Bodyatus just shit on him. Like, get get out of your seat and let a man that knows how to board game board game. <laughs> Never and forget, so, you're just a slave, Asher. Yep. Yeah. And so Bodyatus and Spartacus are like playing this board game and they're drinking wine together they are almost friends Spart body Otis is treating spartacus as almost human and then xena comes in and ruins it and says you know you can't do this like the slaves are slaves they're not your friends and oh by the way you didn't give crixus this special attention when, when he was uh you know big daddy in the ludus uh so immediately so body Otis defends spartacus says spartacus is he's he, Crixus is a brute. Spartacus actually has intelligence, and that's something that we should foster. Uh, basically, like Xena says, Spartacus bad. Badiata says, Spartacus good. And then uh, there is a guard. Uh, a couple episodes ago, Navia stole the guard's key so she could let herself in to bang Crixus. And the guard goes to her and says, Hey, I know you stole my key. Uh, you know, we're going to have a problem. And then Navia says, uh, well, one, I didn't steal the key. Two, if you were to go and tell Badiatis that uh, your key was stolen by a slave, who's he going to be more mad at? The the slave or the guard that lost the key to the slaves? And so the guard backs off. Uh, but we see the guard again uh, after board game night is over. And he is harassing Mira. And Spartacus tries to stop him, and they get into a fight. And Spartacus pushes this guy's head up against a torch. And he's got this, like, gnarly burn on his face through, throughout the rest of the series. And Body Otis comes up and breaks it up, and he yells at the guard and says, you have overstepped by by like harassing this slave without my permission. Uh, I, you're you're going to lose a month's pay for this. And so Body, Body Otis sends him away, and Spartacus goes to apologize. And Body Otis yells at him, do not fucking speak. It's like, I just defended you to my wife, and you immediately pull some shit like this. Uh, if it weren't for Numerius's party tomorrow, Numerius's party tomorrow, I would have you whipped. And if you ever do this again, I don't care who the fuck you are, you will pay for it. I love like, those moments the, when Body the, the friendship is gone. Yeah. Yeah, I love those moments when Body Otis goes full, like psycho you're right where he's like wait a minute you're just a slave you know and i will fuck you up because i can like, he takes that power trip on on even the yep. people who he looks fondly on yep and so i think we're we're ready for the finale of uh the episode are you uh, ready are you ready at, i i mean i'm not <laughs> I, i'm as ready as i'm going to be i'm emotionally devastated but ready to do you have a it. cat on you steve is there a cat uh, anywhere nearby there's a cat nearby uh, so it's uh, it's time for the uh, the exhibition match between Spartacus and Crixus. Only Numerius 
cashes in the, or I guess Alithia cashes in the favor that uh, Numerius owes her, uh, because Numerius says, wait, 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 uh, I don't want Crixus. Crixus is an old has been, and Crixus has this look on his face like, the fuck? Bitch! Like, excuse, you want to say that to my face? Such disrespect to Crixus going on right now. Just so, so Yeah, and so Numeria says, I want Spartacus to fight Vero. And Spartacus and Vero are like, okay, you know, let's do it. This is an exhibition match, you know, we'll see. Uh, so they fight. Vero loses. He Vero gets in some, some shots. He, you know, uh, noticeably uh, catches Spartacus, like, on his side, like, under his ribs with a, a good shot. Uh, that'll be important later. Uh, but Spartacus has beaten Vero, and... Ver and Spartacus has the they're sword to Vero's neck. It was so fun. Yeah, they're just, all just smiles. a bunch like, of ah, guys having fun. What a good Nothing fight could possibly buddies. go wrong. And they're so happy. They're going to be talking his... about this for the next several yes. episodes. Vero <laughs> is, you know, the the end is in sight for Vero's life as a gladiator in more ways than one. And then Numerius gives the thumbs down, and Alithia, and he looks at Alithia, and Alithia looks at him. Alithia has fucked everyone here. And so Spartacus does not want to kill Vero. And Vero's like, look, you have to kill me. Like, if you don't kill me, they will kill us both. And so the guards come up, and they're getting ready. Like, Badiatis is like, Badiatis tried to say, you know, hey, this was just an exhibition. And Clay Calavius kind of pulls rank and says, excuse me, do we have a problem here? And Badiatis says, nope, Spartacus killed Vero. And Badiatis is not happy about this. <laughs> Badiatis yeah. is not happy about this, but his, you know, political aspirations are more important than his slaves, and so he tells Spartacus to to do it. Spartacus won't. The guards come in. They're about to kill both Spartacus and Vero, and so Vero actually grabs Spartacus's hand and forces Spartacus to stab him, and so Spartacus kills Vero, and Vero tells Spartacus, like, just know, like. I don't blame you for this, and if the roles were reversed, I would do the same thing because Vero also has things that he needs to protect. So Vero was saying, I, I get it. Uh, if I had beaten you and you got the thumbs down, I would kill you because I would know that I am a slave and that's the only thing I could do. Uh, but Spartacus has now killed Vero. Alithia looks very proud his of herself. Friend, Body right? Artist, Are you his best friend yes. left in the world? Yeah, his like only friend. Yeah. Uh, Body Otis is not happy, but he did everything he was supposed to do, and so he goes to Clavius and he uh, and says, uh, "Hey, you know, uh, I'm interested in politics. How about you back me up here?" And uh, and and Clavius says, um, "No." Uh, he tries to let him jump gently, but he says, "You don't have the breeding for it." And, <laughs> and just then, just then, Salonius goes up. I, we haven't talked about Salonius, but Badiatis invited Good. Salonius to this party just to rub it in Salonius's face that Badiatis was rising up the, the ranks of Rome. Uh, and so Badiatis shits on Salonius earlier, but then when Calavius shuts down Badiatis, telling Badiatis, you don't have the breeding for politics, Salonius shows up, and he and Calavius go to catch up with one another. And Xena goes up to Badiatis, all excited. It's like, what was his, what was his response? And uh, Badiatis basically tells her, I'm gonna kill the motherfucker, and that's the end of the show. So I have a couple questions before we before we uh, before we talk about this. Sure. Um, one, like, how exactly does Vero's slave contract work? Because he signed, uh, presumably, he has a, a contract. Like, I I will be a slave for X amount of time, and then I'm gonna take whatever money I earned and I will leave. That and it would be one thing if he died in the arena. But this contract sounds like a bad deal if at any point in time your master can just c command your death. Like, that seems like something that shouldn't be allowed here. Yeah, I it's... Mean, oh, go ahead, it Ron. sounds... A sort, it, well, yeah, because, I mean, it's just... it's. I think the contract is just like, well, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll... I'm basically selling myself into voluntary slavery for, you know, like two years or however long it takes to get the winnings that is necessary. But it, the show explicitly tells us two years. 
So I was like, okay, yeah, I've si I sign away my freedom for two years. So I suppose, like, he wasn't really in a position to bargain regardless. So yeah, probably sounds like yeah. Yes, you have to give. You're like this is the standard issue. Uh, we own you now contract in which you get nothing yeah. and we own you. Yeah, uh, it just seems odd that if you episode. have like this contract, like, it, it, the, if you have a, a contract for two years, the when you're at one year and 364 days, uh, your master can just off you. Like that seems like uh, something that probably shouldn't be allowed. But regardless, uh, well, Pharaoh is next, dead. In the and next the... episode, Spartacus mentions that, right? Because um, you know. Uh, Badiatis, he's he does not like the, that fact, obviously, that Vero died. And yeah. Badiatis is like, but he knew the risks when he signed up for this thing. And then, you know, uh, Spartacus is like, but he's not supposed to die to a child's decision, whatever. And Badiatis is like, eh. <laughs> he knew the risks, man. I mean, th this it is just, the kind of shit that happens. This is, this is something that I just remember thinking about, like, even when I first watched this. Like, this seems weird, because, like... Vero was kind of like riding the line between slave and and, and free man. Anyways, it, I mean it doesn't matter. Like, uh, it, someone was gonna die there and ended up having to be Vero. Yeah, I, I there, there's two two big scenes in this, um, and I watched the audio commentary track of this one as well. I was hoping there was, uh, hoping it was gonna be the creators. It's not. Uh, again, it's Andy Whitfield. Um, Lucy Lawless and uh, Viva Bianca, who plays <laughs> Olivia, which was interesting because I was like, "Wow, what, when the when the scene happens with uh, with Olivia and like the 15 year old, are they going to say anything about it? I mean, how how weird is this going to be?" So again, the audio talk commentary track was kind of shitty. They don't really say much at all, but interestingly enough, they did say that the kid that kid was actually 15 years old. He, he was not like 18 who just looked like he was 15. He was an actual underage, you know, actor at the time. A child, and, a legit child actor. Yeah, legit child actor. And um, and Lucy Lawless said that his mom was on set and was very concerned. Like, she, she did not want her son in that in a scene like that um and so when they shot it obviously they they had to shoot it where viva bianca because there's only you only see them together in the same shot early on in the scene basically viva bianca walks over and she sort of bends over and she's like yeah we had to make my cleavage so that my ha the hair wouldn't be in front of it so that he could see it and she was like this kid was being as professional as he could right because she's like it's very awkward you're trying to like seduce this underage child essentially but for the actual scene, scene part where she actually gets nude, he wasn't anywhere on there. Um, but my, yeah, my I think yeah, I kind of figured that's how they would have shot that. Yeah, but because Lucy Lawless was like, people thought just by the way it was shot um, that oh yeah, we we had a fully naked adult woman with this underage kid. She's like, we would never do anything like that. But my my question to you guys is, if put yourself in that kid's shoes right <laughs> or <laughs> whatever if, um, if only yeah <laughs> would you have done what she wanted you to do so so 15 year old steve or rodin just hanging out in the bathtub alithia walks in gets naked she's like i'm gonna do whatever you want happy birthday to you but you gotta do this for me would you do the thumbs down and and kill this guy who you don't know right to you it's just another slave i mean fuck 40 year old steve might do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fair. Yeah, I, I mean like you know especially when you put this in context like this like he's only 15 but for his 15 years of life he has been very specifically taught that there are two different classes of people yep real people and people who aren't people yeah, slaves. Uh, like, so yeah, of course. Like, this is a total win. It's like, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, like, yeah, we're going to do very inappropriate stuff. You know, like, it's like, you know, like sex, sexual stuff that you know, if we actually just went and said it, would probably, you know, it's probably not good for the channel. But we're like, so, so things are going to happen, and all you have to do is give a thumbs down. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> So I, that, that Hell brings up the yeah. next question that I wanted to ask. Uh, it's running brought just brought up that basically, there's basically a class system. Bodyatus is now going to try to kill Calavius, but Calavius hasn't. Or Calavius, however you pronounce his name, he hasn't done anything. Like this is certainly 
not the first Roman that Badiatis has killed or tried to kill, but every other one is either like uh, like committed crimes against Badiatis, like Tullius, like uh, physically assaulted Badiatis. Right. Uh, like Badiatis has been like wrecked by uh, he's had multiple assassination attempts against him, but. Calavius didn't do anything but cor- correctly point out that Rome runs on a class system and Badiatis is in the wrong class for what he's wanting to achieve. Is this the the first, air quotes, innocent Roman that Badiatis has gone after? Am I forgetting someone? Um, They kind of explain that a little bit in the next episode as well, when, when he actually gets him, not to jump ahead to the next episode, but uh, Calavius is like, I meant no disrespect by what I was saying. Like, he's actually shocked that Body Otis is doing this to him, and Body Otis is like, man, you fucking disrespected me in my own home. I let you... Yeah, like, to, to Body Otis, previously... it's like, just disrespect, man. If you disrespect him, you're fucked. Yeah, and that's what I that's what I was getting at. Like, we've seen Body Otis kill multiple people who have also tried to kill Body Otis, but he's going after Calavius because his feelings are hurt. Like, I feel like it we, is we've seen correct. like we we just, I feel like we just saw Badiatis cross a line like somehow body all the shit that he's pulled he is still like crossing lines uh, this late in the series because I'm pretty sure this is the first time that he went after a Roman who had done nothing illegal towards him. This is a radical step up in uh, violence because like yeah as you mentioned everyone else like there was a justification for it to to a certain extent you know like within the within the within the you know like uh, the context of you know this time frame there was a rationale for it maybe not a good one but the rationale was there this guy all he did as you just mentioned was just like hurt his feelings and not even like in a bad way, like you know, like body. If someone had asked us to body Otis, he would have, you know, he, like like if if this role was reversed, body Otis would have happily been an asshole telling you, no, you can't do this. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah, God, go go back to taking out trash, or that. Like and Clay, like, being nice, being respectful. It's like, uh, you know, you're a good you're a good Lenisa. You should you should just stick with this. You don't want to do politics. He's very politely. Putting him down. I think it's because Body Otis is so took. close. He's so close to achieving what he wants as well. Okay, they got so many riches from Spartacus winning. They're the talk of Roman elite society. And I feel like he's he's shooting a shot here, so to speak, and he got, you know, blocked <laughs> and and he's not happy about it. And even even Lucy Lawless, like again, jumping ahead to the next episode, she is she is shocked that he's going after. She actually is like, he's a magistrate. What are you, what are you doing here? Yeah, it's it's a pretty, it's a radical step up. Even when you have the knowledge of the prequel show, it, like uh, in your mind, it's like this. This is a, this is a huge step up in aggression. I'm not entirely certain if it's warranted or not, or if this is a kind of an out of. Uh, I, like, I guess maybe it's just, you know, he finally decided, no, 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 I'm done with this gladiator shit. I am moving up in the world. I don't give a fuck who I have to kill. But the, uh, they don't really, uh, they don't, they, they, I think they could have set that up a little bit better. Yeah, can you imagine, though, the show we could have gotten with John Hanna being, like, a Roman senator and all the crazy <laughs> shit he could, uh, Give me that alternate reality show. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, that yeah. Would be yeah. Digitally de-age John Hanna will go back and we'll redo this show, and now we get to see it. We'll, like he'll have like a whole show of his dedication and moving up politics, where he gets the idea that he is going to become Caesar. Oh, that'd be I, amazing! I, <laughs> I would love that I show. Want, I, I, love want, I want that show. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about the the, the big one, the big moment here. Um, you know, as envious we are about uh, about the, <laughs> the young Roman man. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Vero now. I will say that when I because I had watched more of this before Steve had started, and I, I remember kind of that conversation we had where you were like, "Oh, my favorite yep. character is Vero," and I had seen this by that point in time. And I remember when I first watched this episode; it still sticks with me because I was shocked that I, I did not see this coming at all just at all and I love how it's filmed because when the kid 
was it Nemeus or whatever his name is, he gives a thumbs down, and everyone's still just kind of laughing, because they don't even think it's real and legitimate, you know, that he, no, no, he's calling for a rose death, and they just milk it, man. Like, the, just the tension, and you, you see how Spartacus is like, he does not want to kill his friend, he's not going to kill his friend, and in the audio commentary, um, uh, Andy Whitfield actually said that they had a lot of discussions about how this scene was going to go before they shot it, because in the original script, Spartacus just fucking stabbed him to death and killed him. And Andy Whitfield did not want to do that. He's like, Spartacus would not do that. And they were trying to figure out a way to sort of rewrite it so that, you know, it would make sense for Spartacus' character. And that's when Jai Courtney was like, I will take the sword and I will put it in first. So you basically just have to finish me off. Um, but I just remember, like, the tension there and the acting is so good. Um, from, this is like, this is like the best acting Jai Courtney's ever done in this. <laughs> I should say it's the only time he's done a good job. <laughs> yeah, he but, is so good. His face. He, he is just a looks... charisma void in every other thing he has ever done except yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you just see it in his face, man. And Andy Whitfield, he's like crying, you know, and you just sort of like, this show does a great job of placing viewers in moments and situations where you got to put yourself in that situation. Like, what would you do? So it also brings up another question I have for you guys. Uh, let's say, like, all joking aside, like, th we were in this situation. Whichever combination of us three were in this situation, and you saw some, like, little fucking Roman brat do thumbs down, would we, like, would you kill? Or would you say, fuck it, I'm going to, or we're going to take out as many of these assholes as we can right in that moment? Steve, we'll start with you first. I, I mean, I'm kind of a wuss. I'd probably kill you. Oh wow, <laughs> Jesus! I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I, think, I, I think like probably. I mean, if, if hypothetically, if I was in this situation, I think my first thought would probably be, okay, you know, we're both gladiators. Let's fucking fight our way out of here. But I, I could also see myself uh, getting getting talked into it by the the killy. Wow. Okay, Ro uh, Ronan, how about you? What would you do? I mean, well, we also we gotta bear in mind like the situation that Spartacus is in, uh, like like uh, he doesn't actually do it. Varro's the one, like you just mentioned. Right. Varro's the one who puts the sword in him. Spartacus doesn't do it. Like by the time it, it actually That's comes a good point. to that, Matt, that, I would happily finish you off because I believe that you would plunge <laughs> the sword into your neck for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, so well, you know, there's we also got, we another wrinkle here. The other wrinkle is Varro is like. Look, you've got to watch after my wife and kid, right? Because if we both if we're both dead, there's no one's going to watch after her, and you need to you need to be able to take care of her, sort of thing. So there's another wrinkle there. Um, but let's say that was not there, right? And I'm just I'm looking up into your eyes, Steve. I'm like, don't kill me. I'm not going to put a sword in my Please throat, you son of a bitch. Pie. Let's go fucking take out as many of these Roman assholes as possible. You'd yeah, still kill then, me, Steve? <laughs> no, then, then I mean, we both got real swords. I mean, we probably yeah. both still die, but, you know. Blaze yeah, of glory. Young yeah, guns. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, let, let, let's fight them all off. I mean, okay. it's like a handful of guards and some unarmed, like, Roman babies. Yeah, we could take them. Yeah, of course. Ronan, would you just uh, stab I'm... us to death? I, I think I would actually, uh, because I'm a, I can oh, be Oh, fuck, I just vengeful. folded a 5-4. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I, I I will I I I too can play long term vengeance game. I think I would inevitably go like the Spartacus route of it's like okay like you're all gonna die because of this now. I'm just gonna I'm gonna take my time. So you'd kill <laughs> Steve and I, is what you're saying? Well, would the, like both of you or one of you? Well, if either one of us were in this situation. Let's see here. Uh... Well, again, like you know, like the situation that happens. Okay, st like it's gonna be me and Steve. Oh no, what are we gonna do? with Steve's like, okay, fine, fuck it, Ronan. God damn it, and you start to push the sword into you. No, yeah, no, 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 no. That's not the situation. The situation, Ronan, is either Steve or myself are there, and we're basically looking at you with Vero's puppy dog eyes. But we're like, no, dude, don't stab me. Let's fucking take these assholes out as many as we can right now. What do you uh. do? Uh. He really wanted to stab you, though. 
<laughs> I mean, do you think so? That's if, if let's put Spartacus in this place. Like, if Vero had said, "Let's fight him," do you think Spartacus would have said, "Fuck it," and, and gone for it? Oh, I think Spartacus that's... would have fought him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's actually kind of a more interesting question. I was like, yeah, like that. That would have ended the Spartacus rebellion before it started, right there. Yep. And that also, man, that would have royally fucked over Badiatis too, because now suddenly, like. Because Varro at this point what, is pretty. Yeah, what would Badiatis so have done in that Olivia situation? That's what was banking on. Like, what would Badiatis have done if, like, the kid was like, no, I, I, I want Vera to execute the champion of Capua? Would Badiatis have put up some sort of fight? Or would well, he I have think... just relinquished that? Because Vero is one thing, right? Spartacus is on yeah. a completely different level. I mean, he's a champion yeah, of you Capua. Could, you could argue that if Vero beat Spartacus fair and square, that Spartacus is no longer the champion. Yeah, isn't that I mean, the way maybe it works? Maybe that, that... would have elevated Vero then. Yeah, because that's the thing. It's like Crix, Crixus keep me. That's the op that's the mindset Crixus is operating under. All I have to do is beat this motherfucker. It is the Goku Vegeta principle. All but I have like, to do is beat him. It's like it's just an exhibition. It's not real. Like, it's like they're not. I mean, Spartacus also got cut. It was he real wasn't to that attention. kid, Matt. It was yeah, but, real to that kid. But to Vero and Spartacus, it wasn't that real. I mean, it was it was like an exhibition, and and they're laughing in the middle of the fight. Spartacus wasn't going all out against Vero. I mean, this wasn't a actual gladiatorial battle to the death where each man was putting up like the best they could. This was like a preseason NBA game or something where they're just kind of like putting on a show. <laughs> I think what would have really legit happened had Varro actually won, like, their exhibition match. Okay, yeah, we're just two guys fucking around. I mean, for starters, I don't know, I don't, the kid probably wouldn't have given the thumbs down at that point because, you know, we don't know what exactly Alithia asked him to do, you know, during their, you know, five seconds of wonderment. <laughs> but uh, more than likely, <laughs> more than likely, she was all... Yeah, more than likely, she was also making the, you know, oh, well, the Spartacus is going to beat him. Yeah, of course he is. So in this hypothetical world, like, uh, odds are the kid would not have given the thumbs down because, like, Alithia just would have... I imagine Alithia's, like, of course, was very specific. Uh, kill Varro's, like, uh, kill Spartacus's friend. Uh, but but let's suppose he had been, let's suppose it was who, whoever wins had them killed. Let, let's say... Like, well, whoever loses, whatever, have them killed, if that's what she has. In that instance, I genuinely don't think Vadiatis would have let it happen because Spartacus is just worth too much. So the magistrate would have said, do we have an issue? It's like, well, yeah, I, I, I can't go through with this. He's but the, worth but the magistrate way too said, much. But the magistrate said he would, he would compensate him for Vero's death. He's like, I'll pay you yeah. whatever it costs. Yeah, he, he, yeah, Vero has, like, Vero's not the champion. Vero doesn't, like, people, like, you know, the, 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 the games at Pompeii and stuff, people aren't asking for Varro. They're asking for Spartacus, which right. is why I say, like, Spartacus is just too But what if the magistrate valuable. would have been like, yeah, I'll pay you whatever. Whatever he, whatever he's think, worth for my 15-year-old son, his, his birthday, I'll, I'll give you whatever. I don't think he would have had the money. That's my thing. Like, I, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Spart okay. Like, I, I think Badiatis would have been like, no, no. He's still, he, I, like, he's still too valuable to me at this point in my, you know, scheming and planning. I don't that, think he would have. That done hurts Badiatis because Badiatis at that point thinks he needs to gain his favor to become a political leader. So... Yes, but he also still needs Spart like the fame that Spartacus gives him to further rise up the ranks. It's a lot harder without the bringer of rain. You got Crixus, man. He's raring to go. It's, he doesn't think that at this point. His mind, like he just said earlier in the episode, yeah, you just had him say that. Like, yeah, Crixus is old news. Don't embarrass him too much. It's like, like, but at this point, body honest, uh, he's over Crixus. Yeah, he like he's got a new toy to play with. Like, no, no, I, I, I don't think I, I, I don't think he would have like, uh, I don't think he would have uh, gone for it if it was uh, if Spartacus had hypothetically lost and the kid had gone thumbs down. I don't know. I think he still would have. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with Rona. I don't. I don't think. I don't think there was a price that would have covered what Spartacus was worth at this point. Yeah, I don't think he could have said no. Honestly, uh, again, well, that, that, he's, that, he's not that, in that guy's league. There are completely that, different class systems there. 
that like that that is the that is where the interesting because I I see where you're coming from, but like you know Spart like but Body Otis has a history, you know because we have the knowledge of the prequel show, Body mm-hmm. Otis has a history of telling somebody because remember remember when uh they Tolius tried to buy Gannicus and he said no. Yeah. And Tolius was way above the station, and he told him no because Gannicus was worth too much. That's not something that's completely out of character. Yeah. He was also going to just get rid of Crixus and Gannicus and all those, too, when it suited his needs and what things that he wanted to happen. So I don't know. It's an interesting interesting uh, thing to think about. Unfortunately, we'll never know the answer. I think when Alithia put this plan together, she knew the odds of Vera winning were basically nothing. Yeah, yeah. Possibly. And so yeah. it was all going to be moot. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steve, uh, what did you think when you saw this scene? Because uh, this was I your was favorite character. So sad. Vero was my favorite character. Like I, I loved like the, the 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 brotherhood between these two characters. I was so fucking sad when I watched this. Like I I I, I knew I was hoping to like you know, Spartacus just fucking make him pay. Like they're better. Like the the revenge better be worth it and we're not there yet uh we'll get there in a couple episodes spoilers man, i is. was so fucking sad when i watched this they did such a good job of making you care about vero just to off him i did read in one of in like the the uh, uh the wiki trivia that originally vero oh, no. was going to die a couple episodes earlier but the the positive reception to the character pushed his killing back to this episode. I don't know if that was mentioned in your uh, your DVD commentary or not. Yeah, I was. I, don't know I was how, very unhappy. I don't unhappy know how that would track. This. Yeah, I don't know how that would track because that would imply that the show, like they were still filming the show when it was airing, and I don't. I'm I don't you know, know if that's what how... the wiki says. <laughs> Source of knowledge. The power of wiki. It's on the internet. You can't put lies on the internet. I mean. <laughs> Ronan, how did you, you feel about this scene when you saw it? I have no like memory of my original viewing of this particular scene, so I can't give you my in the moment. What did like you know, young twenty-something year old Ronan think when he was watching this? Uh, I, I I I don't remember what like a uh, like a uh, what I was like the thought process. Uh, it was probably just a oh my god that bitch because I do I do seem to have memories of. Uh, because I was uh, uh, going into like uh, the Xbox 360 chat, playing like Halo 3, and there were friends of mine who we were playing with, and we were also watching the show. And I believe it was after this episode. Yeah, you know, we were just like you know, all in the chat playing Halo 3, and people just jump in. Oh my God, Alithia, that fucking bit. But there's several parts of the show where that that memory could apply. So I might be I might be putting that memory in a different spot. Okay. Yeah, I like that Alithia was able to quickly. Because we we thought that oh well Zena's gonna have control over here for over her for a few episodes at least. Nope, Alithia just nope. she's a snake. Uh, she bounced back real quick from from the last episode and so was here's... like, go ahead. Also, oh, that that reminds me of something that like, uh, or a question has popped into my head. Like, Bodyatis has shown that he knows everything that happens in the house of Bodyatis. Do do they ever realize that Alithia set this in motion? Like, I don't remember that ever coming up. If Ooh. they do, it never gets brought up. I think this is one of the this one might of the be very the one few that Alithia gets away with. Yeah, th- this is one of the very few instances of something happening in his house that he doesn't know about. Yeah, because how would he know? Like, there's yeah, no he, there's like, no he, way he, he would know. He'd have to have like a slave in the bath with. <laughs> With uh, Alithia and that 15-year-old kid, and uh, there was nobody in there. So, yeah, there would be no way for him to know. Yeah, it's it's like a Navy and Crixus. That's something I also don't think the uh, body audits is aware of. Uh, so, like, there there are a couple of things that happen in his house he doesn't know about, but by and large, he knows everything. But, yeah, I, I don't think this is one of them. All right. This episode is the beginning of the end. The, the, the first third of the series was... Spartacus, the reluctant gladiator, and then the middle was Spartacus, happy to be the gladiator, and this is the beginning of uh, Spartacus, the rebellion leader. Yeah. yeah, it's like had Alithia not done this, what she just didn't know is that by this point Spartacus had given up hope of like you know leaving. He was, I'm gonna die a happy gladiator. 
Uh, but uh, no, like uh, her doing this is like this is the thing that will start the Spartacus Rebellion. It's like yeah, like this, or at least within the context of this TV show. Yeah, it's the it's the inciting event that sort of leads yeah. leads Spartacus down a road of uh, forbidden knowledge, shall we say, uh, about what happens. So um, overall, how would you rate this episode, fellas? Fantastic. Very sad, yep. but also very good. It did a great job of making me love the right characters and also hate the right characters. Agreed. I it think reminds... this is just a really cool, cool episode. It's got the, it's got it's that great moment at the end that's kind of unforgettable. Yeah, it reminds you that yeah, TV shows can be written well. You know, it's just such such a rarity these days. So yeah, that's a. Great episode. Like great episode. When you take when you take the stars and the wars out of something, you're just left with goodness. <laughs> and with that, everyone, uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how how Spartacus fares after the death of his friend Vero, uh, with an episode entitled "Old Wounds." So we'll see you next Thursday for another. We're almost done with the season, guys. We only got a couple more episodes left of Blood and Sand. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this all wraps up. If we remember it, ending is good. Uh, as we, you know, in our minds it did back in the day. So we shall see. Yeah.